I'm going to run you through some games with the Legacy deck, and then we'll back up and take a look at the, the deck list and do it in reverse order this time so you don't have to wait. So I'll start through. I think there's a bugged game in here, but we'll just deal with it. So the first game, uh, the first set against Blurry Face 74, I actually don't have the deck as you'll see it in the next three games. It's actually more beneficial for me in this particular match, but... Um, well, I might as well run through them, but it it uh it's changed. So we'll we'll talk about that afterwards when we talk about deck lists. But all right, so I had them all again, but decide to keep a double search hand with the brainstorms very nice because I can um, set things up here. And what I'm trying to do is put cards that I I'm gonna I can force a will with Ascanto here if I need to, and then play the second one. And I'm putting cards back uh, one card that I want, which is a, a redundant search, so I can force with the other. And the second card I don't want, which is a Wasteland, or at least I think I don't want it. It turns out that I may actually want the Wasteland now that I see my opponent has one. So I'm going to go ahead and take out their Wasteland and pass. Having forced Athalia, my opponent's got two moms doing nothing. Again, I'm going to set up... So this version had Mox Diamond. I no longer have Mox Diamond. I have been kind of convinced here, as you can see, I'm dumping Mox because it's not good. And if and that happened fairly consistently, and that's a big sign that Mox Diamond. So I was thinking Mox Diamond was the solution to the lands deck and other decks that attack the non-basic lands. However, I now believe that the solution is the is as foretold, and playing more as foretolds and less Moxes, and also just playing more basic lands. So I've actually increased the basic land count. So we'll check that out. So for now, um, my opponent's having mana problems, and I'm helping him out with that. And they're now, I'm going to now give them a reason to attack me. But this means that if they get draw land here and play Stoneforge, I don't have to counter it. And after this turn, other than the two points of damage I'm taking every turn, um, I'm in great shape. So I don't flip as Kanta just yet. Instead, of, because I'm not going to, I want to play Crucible here um, and make sure that I can sit on my counters. And use this Kanta one more time, and then I'll start digging for um, solutions to the uh, damage it's coming in. So opponent still stuck on one mana, has to discard. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and thin the deck out. Take a look. I think I do want a Force of Will, so I'll flip his Kanta, replay a Wasteland. Make sure that I can keep my opponent in the trap that they're in. And they, they draw a port, so that's awesome. And a Stoneforge, so in response, I'm going to take a look and then decide what my play is find a Swords to Plowshares, so I just let it hit, plow one of the attacking 1-1s. One and uh, I don't need to waste land just yet, I'll waste after I take a look at what I might want to do otherwise, my mana. So I drew a Jace there, very nice. I'm just gonna sit pretty on that for a little bit. I want to play Zathalia, again, I'm gonna dig in response, finding, I believe, a Swords to Plowshares, yep. And again, I'll go ahead and plow away. I'm going to go ahead and counter that pressure card because I have Jace, that weak pressure, but still, um, and then plow away the other creature. All right, so now I'm going to play Jace and use Jace to get rid of uh, Tundra. Uh, sorry, the creature in play because it, it costs mana, and I'm going to use his con to, con to continue to dig. It throws out a uh, three mana 1-1. One, one. I'm going to go grab a card, and it's going to be Zern Orb. So I don't have to worry about my life total anymore. And if I want to, I can set up Balance. quite nicely here. Um, I go ahead and Blessing into more Counter Magic and more Swords to Plowshares, and then pass. So it gives me a Shuffle with Jace. Opponent plays Stoneforge Mystic, so in response I'm going to dig, and there is another Plow. It's the third one of the game, so I'll take out their 1-1. One, one. Find another Swords to Plowshares, so we'll go ahead and play as foretold here. Plow the Mystic and Pass. That is now the fourth Sword Supply Shares of the game. When it plays a creature, of course, I'm going to shuffle because I know the top card's not good, and then I'm going to dig. Uh-oh. Don't tell me we're going to bug. Don't bug. No. Are we bugging out? Oh, no. Um, I think we are, actually. I don't think. Oh, this is acting like everything's working, but 
can't possibly be correct. Okay, so basically, uh, I end up finding another source to plowshare as I plowshare his fifth creature and his sixth creature, and eventually find a moat, and then my opponent just completely packs it in. We move on to the second game, which is what I'll do now. And the second game doesn't go well for me. So this version of the deck had like way too many balances, way too many copies of balance. It was trying to run Mox Diamonds in balance. So the idea was I'm going to ask for told, four as for tolds, right? Four balances, four Mox Diamonds and a Zern Orb. I'm going to dump my hand with Force of Will and uh, Moxin and then balance away the board and mind twist my opponent, Wrath of God them. But even setting myself up like that, it's just not, it's just not good. Well, you'll see. Right? You can kind of see it already. Almost completely out of gas right now. I've got a balance in my hand, but I need an for told. And this is the problem. Well, there's a Thalia that's going to make things much more difficult. So I leave the Mox Diamond on top um, because I have to, because my opponent has a Wasteland there. So I need to, if I draw a non-basic, which is the other card on top, I'm going to um, play it. And then that way I'll have four mana so that I can actually play as foretold in balance. And make a long story short, I'm going to skip the rest of this. So here's what's going to happen. Um, I draw moat and never draw a land and draw no as foretolds. So I can't play the balance in my hand because no as foretolds. I can't play the moat because Thalia and I only have four mana sources. Never draw another mana source and die. So that's kind of how that goes. A little bit of frustrating uh, result, but I just move into game three. Mulligan and keep a very nice... So this is what I'll miss about the Moxes, of course, is the fast early starts, but honestly, do you need to rush out a search right there? I don't think so. When it has an early vial, I'm going to go ahead and brainstorm right away. I'm trying to figure out exactly what I want to do. Ultimately, I decide I'm not going to shuffle just yet. I'm going to wait and see what they do. And what they do is miss a land drop. So they've got a... Their hand is fairly vile over there, I would say. All right, so plow. I'm actually going to let it go because I'm holding, you know, humility and just slam it right now. And suddenly my opponent's got a card that will slowly put one ones with no abilities into play, which is very nice. All right, disenchant. Yep, I'm going to take it. And smoke the vial. And at this point, well, not looking good from my opponent's side. That's that's for sure. Get rid of a land I don't want. Find a disenchant again. Of course, I sideboard those in against the uh, Aether Vile decks. When it's got rip, uh, it doesn't really hurt me. It's not going to allow my Esconta to flip, but I'll disenchant in response to the effect so that I can start packing the uh, graveyard again. Get ready to flip. Holding a card for um, buffing purposes and brainstorm purposes. And of course, in a, version, in a deck with mocks, there's a scroll rack in here as well. So there's a lot of reasons to hold it. All right, let's get rid of that. And boom, there's a reason to play. Have To have held, for example. So I'm going to draw three, put two back. Oh, restore balance off the top. And I'll just keep this here moat and sack one land. You kill like your entire hand and board please. All right. So at this point, so we're on three counters, so I don't need lands anymore. I can use them to shuffle, which is good here, but I don't actually need to draw them. So now my opponent has no cards in hand and no way to attack. He's going to wasteland in spite, I guess. Hopefully, hoping it affects me, but it will not. Of course, I'm going to go ahead and flip his Kanta. Right, and plus up Jace, because now we're going after... I'm just going to keep my opponent off ever playing again and use Escanta the Sunken Ruins to find um, lock pieces. So there's counter spell number one, which I could, of course, cast off the as for told for free. Plus the Jace, take out um, Rest in Peace. Uh, ho hopefully, you know, the card I don't want him to get is Wasteland, but I will put... I will tuck other cards that I don't want them to get of course, i um, going to go ahead and plus. Oh, they have a Rishadan port. That's definitely not a problem. You can keep that. And I'll just immediately waste that. Well, I won't immediately waste that, but I'll always count to first. And the Factor Fiction, which I can now cast for free off as foretold. 
Taking force rule and account council's judgment, wasting the port. So that I don't have to use this content on my turn. Sword, sword of fire and ice, they can keep. This is uh, just a pretty savage beating at this point. I'll go ahead and use Kanta. Find myself a counter spell. Mill off some junk. Go ahead and plus up chase. Play a free council's judgment and smoke that sort of fire and ice just in case. I also didn't want to have to discard the hand size. Opponent plays a useless 1 1. And I will dig some more and find another counter spell. That's all four of them, even though I'm pretty sure I played a counter spell at least once this game. And now we'll plus uh, on minus chase, and my opponent has zero cards in hand, zero library. I will dig one last time just for fun to see what I was going to get, and they die to empty deck. So I do think one more Jace is good. I mean, I wouldn't have got the force. I wouldn't have got the um, factor fiction, free shuffle, and the blessing, and all the, you know, draw a counter spell and a what did I get? Counter spell judgment. But on the other hand, you know, if you have a Jace running, like you're fine. Like you're not gonna lose because you have drawn a second Jace, and you don't really necessarily need the factor fiction at that point. So I don't. I don't think factor fiction should be in. I think it should be a second Jace. Jace is just way too insane. Uh, but having said that, I cannot afford it at all. So we'll leave it as Factor Fiction for now and just play the one. So next round, I played Malar here. Um, single round, we just, uh, I don't think that this individual wanted to play multiple rounds against me. But um, I have a pretty good hand for dealing with Mono Blue, depending on how things go. So I'm going to brainstorm here. Very nice. I'm leaving the land tax on top and going for counterbalance. So my hope is that this sticks, because if it sticks, a lot of these blue decks play cards like Op, Ponder, Preordain, you know, and so forth, and counterbalance could be a problem for them. Unfortunately, they've got the answer, and I already know the top card's a one drop, so I'm not going to reveal it to them, so I'm just going to have to play Search for Escanta. And after my opponent cannot daze it, because I have an untapped wasteland, so after it resolves, I then activate that untapped wasteland. All right, Blessing is going to shuffle in, and I find a white source. All right, so that's good. Especially since I have no cards in hand, I'd like to refill. Opponent doesn't play into tax. Either they don't have it or don't want to play into it. Here, I'm going to play a wasteland because of two reasons. One, if I want to tax, I can self-wasteland. And secondly, I could. Uh, I want to get closer to activating a throne. So my opponent, um, I waste them. They play a non-basic, so I waste it during their combat step, forcing them to play instance, and they play mission briefing. So I guess they're, they're testing out some stuff too, so that's cool. Again, same same trap with the Wasteland. Even better now that I have the Tithe, actually. Opponent's brainstorming and plays nothing, so I'm just going to Tithe for uh, White Blue Source. Put a wasteland in the graveyard, and down comes throne. So if my opponent's not going to do anything, then I've got the punish. Crack that throne at the end of their turn. And now I am the monarch. So here I've got a counter spell. Excellent. Um, so I have played... <coughs> I, I can't remember if I played a counter spell or not this game, but um, we got that guy's blessing flip. All right, so anyway, <coughs> opponent... Snapcasters or Brainstorm, I let that resolve. I let them try to cast the Brainstorm, plow in response. They force, I then counter, and fortunately, it would have been really nice to have another blue here, but fortunately, they don't have another force to try to steal the Monarch. If they did, then the only way I can get it back is to eventually get Crucible and replay the throne. But they don't have, they didn't have a force, a second force, and they did not have a Jace, so we're in good shape now. Skanta flips. And that's about it. There's that crucible I would have needed. My single restore balance. Okay, so opponent goes for a counterbalance. I'm going to try to counter spell. Unfortunately, they so they brainstorm in response. <clears throat> and then force the uh, counterbalance. So I'm going to respond with an Escanta search. But I, even if I find a counter here, I can't actually counter. I miss. I don't know what I was thinking with taking the forbid with the restore balance there. The as foretold, rather. 
Um, I'm not sure that that makes any sense, but I do try to play it here and it sticks. So we'll have to assume that it's going to be okay. My opponent revealed a ponder. So I'm, I'm getting a little bit flooded. So I was thinking maybe restore balance might be a way that if I can rip a Zern orb, I could just go Zorb balance, sack everything, restart the game if I need to. But we'll see what happens. So I'm going to dig now. And then at this point, my opponent scoops. So kind of a tough one there. It's very, there's a, a temptation, a strong one to actually take counter spell. But then my opponent's going to probably be stacking twos on top of their deck as much as they can. Um, the other option could have been take the ancestral and try to ancestral next turn. But if my opponent has a land, which is the most likely thing, then that doesn't work out. And the third option is Zernor, but has the, runs into the same problem. Plus, I'm not sure that I want to balance when I have an Escanto running. I really just want to protect my board. So the most appealing, actually, of the three might actually be the counterspell. Just because um, I can continue to draw extra cards. And so I don't necessarily need the Ancestral Recall here. I really just need to hold the line while Escanta uh, wins the game for me. So kind of a neat one there. Um, but my opponent only played me once in that particular match. Now here I played twice against Charles on Fire. And uh, I'll explain. This game's going to bug out. I'll show you as much as I can and explain kind of what happened. Um, because it was interesting, certainly. So I have a very solid hand um, if things work out for me. And my opponent's playing blue. I brainstorm. Oh, they worked out beautifully, didn't they? Look at that. Right into a uh, sack land. I can sit on a counter spell here if they try to run out counterbalance. And if not, a chalice for one, that's ugly, but I can tithe in response, fetch a um, trop, brainstorm, and set myself to only, as it turns out, one single one mana card, and it's a card I don't care about. So I'm going to, uh, with Force of Will backup, I'm going to go for an as for told. My opponent forces it with a Jace, I believe. Yeah. Very happy to see that, and I let that go because I just got a counter and a Jace for the low, low price of an As for Told, which is excellent. Fun to play Sorcerer's Spyglass, and not knowing what to name besides the name Teferi. Should have named the Flipped as Kanta, but I guess they're running it too, so they didn't want to lock themselves out. Trinket Mage here. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using Throne to... Um, win this game. So I decided to counter it for, for just tempo since I'm going to be able to play Force of Will hardcast. And I cannot Swords to Plowshares. If I could, I'd probably just let it go. So same thinking there is um, I still have another counter. I go ahead and flip as Kansa, play a land here, and now I can cast Factor Fiction with Counterspell Backup or use my search with um, Counterspell Backup. So time to get to work. Misclicking, taking Spell Pierce instead of Force of Will felt so stupid there with the Chalice in play on one. So my opponent does play Search, and that's why they didn't name it. So I'm going to go ahead and take a peek and find a Ancestral Vision and a Brainstorm. So I was thinking about casting Fact Fiction. I really want a Fact um, at some point here. I cannot use the Brainstorm just yet, but I mean, my intention is I'm trying to find the solution for Chalice there. So with my opponent on only one mana, I decide I'm going to push Factor Fiction and go a lot deeper into my library. But because they give me a split that allows me to reshuffle all those lovely counterspells back into the deck, I decide to take the balance side of that equation. And look at that. I burned three counterspells and just top decked one because there are none in the graveyard. Very, very nice. My opponent goes Painter Servant, and now it all becomes clear. Now I know what's going on. I'm not worried in the slightest about Painter Servant now that I understand what my opponent's doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and thin the deck a little, dig with Ascanta, and totally going to allow, and this is where we're going to bug out. I'm going to allow the um, Trinket Mage, um, so the game bugs from here. But I end up taking Swords of Plowshares, they Trinket Mage, they go get Grindstone. They decide not to run it out into four open blue. On my turn, I draw, finally, Council's Judgment. I Judgment away the Chalice on one and then play a land. And at that point, I'm able to just uh, completely take over the game. I don't think I Judgment for one like right, right away. Oh, no, I did. This was the first game. Yeah. I just wipe out both their creatures. At, at that point, 
I have almost a full grip. Active as cons are running. I've got Brainstorm and a Fetch. A spell Pierce that's now active at least and a counter spell. And my opponent, ha and I still have an extra Swords of Plowshares in my hand. And my opponent just completely packs it in. I went into the second game. And unfortunately, the second game, I think, bugged out so hard that this is why the first game bugged out. I actually think it might have affected everything. Okay, so, so here's what happened. In the second game... Basically, we play this really long, wonderful control game. And finally, um, I'm fighting over getting my board position set up. And I'm not fighting over my opponents other than any card drawing that they might be doing. And so I let all the grindstone stuff happen. And of course, because I'm running Guy's Blessing. And so the only thing I need to worry about would be like ex uh, them exiling, uh, finding a way to exile the Guy's Blessing. So I just build up knowing that um, I don't need to fight over you know, knowing exactly what I need to fight over. My opponent still hasn't seen, doesn't realize yet what they need to fight over. And on the turn where they get Grindstone Servant active, but I've been kind of Wasteland and other things going. So I have like way more mana, a grip full of counter spells and a card drawing engine running. My opponent gets his combo and he's down to three, three cards in hand and like four mana or something. Activates it targeting me and I'm just chuckling because, you know, Mills my whole graveyard, hits Guy's Blessing, double Guy's Blessing triggers, go on the stack. The game freezes, and then he and I both end up logging off and logging back in. The game's still frozen, and finally the deck, it reshuffles all and rewinds everything that happened from the end of the game all the way to the beginning, starts all the way over to turn one, and says, would you like to play first to my opponent? So... He was dead, but something about that guy's blessing just completely hosed it. I don't know. Anyway, he scooped, and so I get the win, but that was it was on the back of a stupid bug that kind of ruined the uh, replay. I didn't realize also the first game, I guess, so unfortunately. All right, so here I've got a game against McDonk, and I've got first turn tax with Force of Will backup. When it plays a Bayou, which is one you don't see too often. I'm going to run out Scroll Rack, and I realize I'm risking Abrupt Decay here on either target, but I have Force of Will and a Search, and I may need to Force. I don't know what's going on over there, so, you know, um, so I decide this is the safer play because this two-card combo is really powerful and obviously, like, has the more potential than anything else I could have done. If I played Search there, then I can't Force, and that's just not pretty, so... When it runs out confidant, I decide I'm not going to force it because I can should be able to keep up with land tax. And he's going to be pressured with hand size. But I will go for a scroll rack and hope for a lucky plow. I find two. Awesome. Opponent does wisely, does not play anything into land tax. I, of course, am not going to do that either. I'm just going to sit here till I draw Zern Orb, if that's the game we're going to play. Unfortunately, my opponent's playing Moxes, so kind of miss mine. Plays a life from the loam, but the problem for them is that that's not really getting them too far if they're unwilling to play lands because they're they're gonna end up in the same kind of a situation anyway. And I, th I I end up shuffling down, setting up for a council's judgment turn here where I could hit their mocks and make really encourage them to play land. But I realize um, I can actually play search here. I still have force up, and I don't want to play a land. And maybe maybe them sitting on two is the only thing that's really keeping me in this game. So. With his Kanta on the stack, I'm going to put a land back. because since Once I think it through and realize I'm not going to play lands, I go ahead and his Kanta the land away. And now I've got a little bit of a, a nice little bit of deck control. There's that second Swords for the second Dark Confidant. Um, nice deck control with the his Kanta scroll rack ac action happening. Opponent has a third Dark Confidant. So I'm going to just have to let it happen. I'm not willing to. I, I kill the Sylvan because I'm, I'm probably going to be taking damage here. And I also can't cast it. And yet again, scroll rack, I refuse to play lands. I will find eventually a way to deal with the confidant, but... All right, so my opponent flit reveals a punishing fire. It's certainly coming together now, but I do have a counterbalance in my hand to deal with punishing fire. So when opponent goes for X on three with green suns and having played a land there, I force knowing using factor fiction, knowing that I have a much better card drawing engine here and I'm not going to need to worry about it. Run out of counterbalance with active scroll rack. Opponent reveals a heath, plays a wasteland on me, which means I can continue to tax. 
and tries for a Knight of the Relic, where it's a run you don't see too often. So I'm going to tuck away double land as foretold, putting the as foretold on top, and I've got tax rack or uh, tax rack counter rack going. All right, search for this contest. So I stack. Um, I decide that I'm going to go ahead and let my three go. So, and of course, because I'm playing so many of them, so I find another one immediately. Ancestral myself and pass. And so now I I don't have force uh, score rack going, but I have force of will up. Opponent goes for a confidant, and I decide I'm going to force that. There's the factor fiction force. What did I force with earlier? Oh, a brainstorm. Of course, that makes perfect sense with the score rack going. Go opponent was baiting me with a Liliana, so now I have to force a will with a counter spell, which is painful. But I know that the top card in my library is uh, a land. I tried to blind hit it and failed. Search reveals me a force of will. I'm not going to flip search here because if I flip it, then it will not... Um, if I flip it, then we're even on land. So I don't want that to happen here. But as for Told's over there ticking up, and so I'm just getting in a good position here. It uh, reveals a land to Dark Confidant. Plays another one, so now I feel a little bit more comfortable with playing another land. Taking some damage, of course, but I'm way ahead on cards. Despite an active Confidant over there, that is not keeping up with me seeing um, as many cards per turn as I'm seeing. Again, I'm not going to flip this Conta yet. I don't want a humility. Um, what I really want is sorts of plowshares. I mean, I'll get to humility at some point, but I go ahead and set Crucible on top of my library because I don't intend to play it, and uh, Liliana is the most threatening thing I've seen out of their deck at three, so go ahead and play an As Foretold, and there's the plow for free off of the previous As Foretold. So as you can see, I don't... The beauty of the four As Foretold deck is that um, you can afford to play land tax games, and you can do it with Zern Orb as well. If you need to, um, because as foretold, will allow you to play your cards for free. So you get into a situation where, all right. So my opponent's just punishing fire, trying to trying to kind of grind me down there. I'm gonna have to discard to hand size and pass. But I have active brainstorm. So opponent goes for knight, and remember I put a three drop on top the crucible, so that's a free counter for me. Tries a punishing fire. I brainstorm in response off as foretold for zero mana, putting back a basic land and guy's blessing. So nope. All right, so I don't want to draw any of that. I'm going to go ahead and tax. Let the Azkanta... Ooh, Zernorb will go on top. That's lovely. Now I can hit my land drops and go after my opponent's mana a little bit more aggressively um, to make the Punishing Fires a lot harder for them to, to do. Of course, I've got them covered by the Skorak counterbalance business. And the fact that I've got a 2, 3, 4, and 5 drop means other than one mana cast, cost cards... They're not going to really be able to do much here. Now, I was going to discard Flooded Strand to hand size and pass and um, and then just let my opponent kind of struggle in the web that I've created where I would exchange three basic islands for plus one card to counter whatever their next play was and uh, just kind of keep them locked out of the game. If they make no play, just dump the three islands and call it good. This is a three on the ask for told over here and uh, what is it, one? So... As soon as this hits five, I don't even have to worry about holding a blue card anymore for Force of Will. And pretty soon I'm just going to, I'm going to continue at, at four. I'm going to get to play the uh, Humility for free. And of course, eventually Jace for free, making this game pretty impossible for my opponent, particularly with Crucible of World Zern Orb running. At some point, I will uh, have to decide do I want to continue to wasteland them or not. But I really don't need a lot of mana here. I'm going to get the third as foretold on board, uh, most likely, at which point um, I can easily sack like a planes or something and just run on two lands for scroll rack activations and let the triple as foretold uh, play my whole deck for me. Really, you could get down to just one land and leave them with just two lands and consider that a pretty safe place to be, uh, a fairly comfortable place to be. Uh, you can keep them off loam forever. And of course, the other option that I had here was I can blessing away my opponent's loam as well. So good stuff happening there. So my opponent just scoops and we move into game two. And now I get to sideboard compost, which I haven't actually been able to do for a while. I could also sideboard chill. However, I decide uh, there's not enough really. I mean, just, just chill for that burn spell that's not going to beat me. It does not make any sense. So my opponent's got an early ley line, which is going to be problematic for me. I go ahead and fetch myself a Tundra and a Savannah and pass. 
Hopefully they don't do anything too heinous here because I don't have counter magic up, but I do at least have swords. Turns out to be a good thing because I've got Ramanap Excavator. Unfortunately, that's one sword's permanently out of the game, which is disappointing. When it goes for Confidant, well, there goes a counter spell out of the game permanently. Oh, and a compost off the top. I'll take it. Uh, nice consolation prize. Unfortunately, I feel Tireless Tractor is too much of a threat for card drawing and... Uh, even though I, it's not a card that I can effectively moat. And so that's three creatures they played that generate card advantage. So not super happy here. I decide I'm going to sit on another counter spell because I'm worried about something like Natural Order. Instead, I see Thalia. Yep, there goes the counter. And since I'm out of counters, I'm going to play a counter balance. And this is a very nice turn. So my opponent goes for an Assassin's Trophy on counter balance. So at this point, I'm... I don't have a blue, and I don't have a two drop, so I just have to hope that the top card's a two drop. But remember, I sideboarded an extra two drops, and blind reveal is... Uh, I kind of spoiled it, but yeah, compost. I, I counter an assassin's trophy with a compost, drawing a card because it goes to his graveyard, and then play as foretold, and now I've got uh, brainstorm in response to Dark Confidant, and now the game is over. We'll reveal the same compost, counter the Dark Confidant, and draw a card off of my compost. And um, I've got As Foretold starting to tick up, so my opponent won't be able to lock me out with like wastelands in any sense of the in any kind of way. And my next card, of course, is Compost, which will come down, putting my opponent in a pretty big bind. Because if they play at that point with double compost, if they play a uh, a black card and I counter it, I can force a will it losing two cards to counter a black card and drawing two cards off of the black card. So not good uh, for my opponent at that point. And they realize it and go ahead and scoop. So luckily it was, you know, my post, my opponent brought in assassin's trophy over abrupt decay. I'm sure they have both, but because they had the trophy and weren't able to deal with the counterbalance there. Um, yeah. I, as you can see, it won the game. Had they had Abrupt Decay, it would have been a much harder thing because then um, I would have had Compost down, but I would have had to uh, deal with the Confidant, although as it turns out, I found a Swords. Um, I would have got, you know, a lot of cards going, card drawing engine going, but I wouldn't have had the counter engine going and might have been a much tougher game because of the fact that Leyline would have exiled my, um, exiled my uh, counterbalance permanently. So anyway... Enough on that, though. So here's where the deck is. And I do think maybe one As Foretold should be a Council's Judgment. But as you can see, As Foretold is extremely, extremely good. Um, just does so much for this deck. So I'm not 100% sold on that. The other option could be to drop the Restore Balance and run a second Ancestral Vision. But I think the minute you do that, you're going to regret it. Because you'll play against something like Enchantress, where they just you know, dump piles of lands, like highly enchanted lands into play and generate tons of cards. And if you can't, if you can't balance um, to, if you can't get the like Zirin Orb as for total balance thing going to uh, reset that nonsense, um, there's almost no way to win. I mean, humility is okay. It helps, but still, um, their engine is very, very good and could be a problem. Although counterbalance can help a lot against them, but still pretty rough. So I think t I think one each is probably right. Maybe even more Ancestral Visions. Probably another Jace. So probably Factor Fiction for Jace. Maybe As Foretold for Council's Judgment. And then probably, I would say at that point, call it good. I wouldn't make too many other big changes. Um, the main thing here is that I took out all the red and decided I don't need Pyroblasts. Uh, they conflicted with Chill on the sideboard for starters. And secondly, Spell Pierce often acts like a, a Pyroblast anyway against blue, but it's off of safer lands. It gives me much better mana base. The six basic lands is really, really important because there's just so many hosers out there and um, for basic lands. And so this, this just makes you a lot more re resilient to that sort of thing. So... Yeah, so this is this is everything. Hopefully you enjoyed it. The reason for the one planes, by the way, is the assumption here is if you have land tax in play and you're taxing for lands, you need a second white for judgment, humility, or moat. Well, 
um, provided the one land you have to play your land tax wasn't the planes, you can go get the planes. And it's possible maybe you could go to four and two split, but you really want to be cautious because it's a, a true bummer to draw the um, basic planes in most situations, uh, although you do need to have at least one, right? So anyway, I think. Anyway, so that's it. Uh, like I said, hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, there were some games in there also that were uh, badly played or um, not this version. I even started with one of them that, that won, but you could see it winning and struggling and compare that to the, the transition version, which is this, and see it winning and not struggling anywhere near as much. So um, definitely like this a lot better. But tell me what you think in the comments if you like, and uh, hopefully one of these days I'll be able to get a second Jace. But also, if you haven't seen it yet, check out the, um, I posted a video of the Cube uh, Gilded League, which is extremely fun, and I definitely recommend you check that out if you have any interest whatsoever in sealed deck. That's all I've got now. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.